men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is a unique and remarkable person. She's considered by more than 30 million people around the world as divinity. She's inspired numerous welfare projects, hospitals, schools, educational institutions, a pension scheme for more than 50,000 destitute women. She's embodied ecumenical dialogue and the highest aspirations of humankind. I'm delighted to welcome Mata Amritanand Maidevi. Uh, Mother, what is your essential teaching for mankind, if you had to say it in a few sentences? Be honest with oneself and have faith. Optimistic faith in Shraddha are the qualities required to succeed in life. Such a person alone can do good work for society and the world as a whole. You inspire so many uh, social work and welfare projects from your love and from your compassion for humankind. Um, in a world where there is so much um, immorality, there is so much corruption, how have you ensured that your many projects work so well and so efficiently? People who hold responsible positions in various institutions and social service projects of the ashram maintain a pure mental attitude towards the work they perform. Therefore, up to now, the moral values have not degenerated. They work selflessly, and hence the ashram is able to serve suffering humanity to a certain extent. Millions of uh, followers believe in, in your divinity. Uh, what does it feel like to be divine? To become God is to become a real human being. Everyone is God, but people don't realize this great truth due to a lack of awareness. They will neither be able to experience divine bliss within, nor will they be able to express it in their actions. A life without awareness is an unconscious life. A human form which others can relate to is very much needed in order to develop this awareness in people who are in search of the truth. Uh, does Amma herself, uh, what is her uh, practice as someone who is divine? Uh, does she pray uh, to a god? To How does she practice her divinity? Amma knows everything to be the Atman alone. Still, to set an example for others, Amma observes all spiritual and ethical values in her life. Only when we practice the values in our lives will we be able to inspire others to follow them in their lives. I don't have a message higher than my own life. Who are the uh, gods and goddesses that uh, Amma herself worships? You are all the forms of my worship, my gods and goddesses. You know, many religions uh, preach uh, peace and, 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 and tolerance. Most religions preach peace, divine love, tolerance, and yet there is um, so much conflict in the name of religion. Uh, Amma has been um, a votary of ecumenical dialogue, of dialogue between religions. How does she see the relationship between religions? Those who are the cause of religious conflicts do not have an in-depth understanding of religion. Religion is only an intellectual exercise for such people. For them, religion is nothing but another form of business like running a factory. Does mother believe uh, uh, in, in, in the unity of religions, but yes, uh, on the everyday practice, we see religion uh, in, its, in its social context to be different. Uh, how does Amma reconcile uh, the apparent difference in religions with the apparent unity in religions? Today people are ready to die for their religion, but are not ready to live up to the essential principles as taught by the exponents of that religious faith. At, at one level all religions preach the same thing, that uh, love and compassion and higher aspirations of faith. But at the everyday level, uh, religions are very different uh, in social practices. So, how can we bring about greater understanding uh, between the religions? The weather may forecast rain. It may say it will rain at such and such a time. However, we won't get any water if we squeeze the newspaper. Only when it rains will we get water. Likewise, a mere study of scriptures will not bring peace and unity amongst religions. Only by living these values will unity be surely established. 
Though there is some uh, convergence uh, in recent thinking uh, in the relationship between science and, and, and spirituality, um, the conclusions of modern science are often at odds uh, with the conclusions of uh, spirituality and religion. So how does Amma reconcile uh, science and spirituality? Scientific advancement is essential. Science deals with one plane, but a spirituality deals with another. Science air conditions the external world. Spirituality air conditions the internal. There is a limit to where science can reach to where our intellect and logic can take us, because the search is in the external world. Spirituality begins where science ends. Uh, very often scientists don't tend to have uh, a, a system of values and morality. So you have many new developments in science like human cloning. Uh, what does Amma think about the new developments uh, in science which push the uh, areas of morality? <laughs> I do not say that all new inventions and discoveries should be suspended. But before announcing to the world such discoveries and inventions should be properly evaluated in the light of dharma and past experience. Only if they are beneficial to the world should they be introduced. It would be nice if scientists do only that which is useful and beneficial to society by considering the majority of feelings of people. Of course, morality and right conduct must be there. Similarly, it is satachar or right conduct and dharma that are the warp and weft of society. They are what maintain the balance and harmony of our society. Our scriptures talk about these principles. Peace and harmony will prevail when these scriptural dictums are properly understood and practiced in our day-to-day -day life. Economic development has uh, seen a lot of uh, material progress. Uh, but has also meant uh, erosion in values. Uh, in what ways does Amma view uh, the new economic uh, uh, growth uh, in India, the globalization, the, the new approaches to development? And how does she feel that is affecting the, the lives and, and the value systems of people? <laughs> I do not say that material progress is not needed. It is very important as far as the social well-being of a country is concerned. However, spiritual awareness should also grow. If that is lost, then life becomes as meaningless as putting makeup on a corpse. Without spirituality, human beings will be like robots. Life will become mechanical. Along with material progress, there should be commensurate growth in spiritual awareness also. In so many countries, there are crucial unemployment problems where people are facing poverty and starvation. Even if they succeed in securing jobs and making progress in material life, they will not be able to make proper use of this progress unless they simultaneously grow in spiritual awareness. If this doesn't happen, then all the material growth that we achieve will pave the path for our own destruction. Deluded by the materialistic world of temptations, our youth have neither maturity nor a proper perspective on life. They are unable to retain their individuality. If we don't create conducive conditions for them to grow spiritually, it will not only cause a lot of harm to them, but also to society. Is it necessary to uh, believe in God uh, to be a good human being and to be a compassionate, loving human being? God is nothing but divine qualities. If a person is loving and compassionate, truthful and righteous, he is a devotee of God, though he may be an atheist. This is my opinion. Uh, if there is uh, a loving God, uh, why is there uh, so much uh, human suffering, uh, even if we are ignorant of uh, God? God is the embodiment of love, but we do not turn to Him. Hence, there is suffering in life. There are some children who may spit out even the sweetest things given to them. They don't relish the taste. Suppose a person has a secret lover besides his wife. Such a person will not appreciate his wife, even if she dresses up in the most beautiful way. We have to use soap to wash away and clean dirt from our bodies. There's no point blaming the soap for not using it. Having driven the car fully drunk, if a person meets with an accident, isn't it foolish if he blames the fuel? 
The present suffering is a result of our indiscriminate actions and our neglect of moral and spiritual values in our lives. God is always compassionate and loving. His grace is always there. We don't have the right mental attitude to receive His grace. No matter how long we live close to a radio station, unless we tune our radios to the right frequency, we cannot hear the programs that are broadcast. As our minds are not attuned to God, we are not able to receive His grace. Not even a drop of water will go into a vessel that is kept upside down. Likewise, the ever-flowing grace of God will not enter our hearts if it remains closed. So there's no point in blaming God for our suffering. Different uh, religions see God differently. Uh, and um, we have struggled in India with the issue of uh, conversions, of people changing from one religion to the other. So what does Amma think about people from one religion changing their faith? Amma does not support conversion. Religion is something that should be chosen freely by each individual. It is not something that needs to be forced upon people. Amma is not for it. Amma believes in the conversion of mind from darkness to light. Those who do not dive deep into the essential principles of their religion will be misled and get converted. It will lead them to greater darkness. Many religions preach about God with only one form. However, Hinduism reveres everything in creation as God. Hindu faith can be compared to mathematics. It requires a bit of intelligence and subtle understanding to grasp the true principles. Due to this lack of understanding, many are being misled and exploited. They criticize idol worship in Hinduism. However, all religions in one way or another practice image worship. The Buddhists say that they are against idol worship, but there are huge statues of Buddhas in monasteries and incense sticks are lit in front of them. The Christians light candles in front of the image of Jesus or a cross and offer prayers. The Muslims offer namaz, looking in the direction of Mecca. They extol the divine qualities of God. So worshipping of divine qualities is something common to all religions. All the forms of God and goddesses in Hinduism have a very deep inner significance, which when understood properly will remove all confusion. Uh, all the religions preach uh, love and compassion. What is it that people like me can do to develop uh, real love and real compassion uh, for other uh, human beings and other sentient beings? One should try to look into oneself. Then one will become aware of one's weaknesses and shortcomings. Looking into ourselves will enable us to experience beauty in the diversity seeing the unity in everything. Sincere introspection will help us to have a thorough knowledge of ourselves, which in turn will help us learn deeper lessons from each and everything in the entire creation. We are not isolated entities. We are inseparable links of that universal chain. Though we are not aware of it, our thoughts, words and actions have an influence on others. The attitude that I will change only after others have changed is wrong. Once we change, others will automatically change. Unfortunately, we are only aware of our rights. We should also be aware of our responsibilities towards society and try to fulfill them. Uh, in our uh, tr uh, traditions in India, we have the most uh, sophisticated uh, sadhanas, you know, of uh, yoga and of training the mind. So what sadhana does uh, Amma suggest uh, to, to, to people? The same sadhana cannot be prescribed for everyone. It would be like a hotel where only a single dish is served. Only when a variety of food items are offered can the hotel cater to people with different tastes. Similarly, there are many paths, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, karma yoga. Amma prescribes the path according to that person's samskara, mental constitution, inclination, intellectual growth, mental strength, situation and time. To cite an example, for patients who are suffering from the same disease, the doctor may prescribe an injection to some, give tablets to others, and yet he gives a tonic to some others. 